Well, hey guys, good morning. I am, am on my way in to work early this morning. I am giving the, the uh, residents that I work with a lecture this morning, so that is where I'm at. Uh, this, this morning I did the Hada Labo uh, Super Plumping Gel Cream yet again. Totally loving that. I haven't um, continued with the Galactomyces Whitening Serum by Cause RX. Um, comment below on how you guys use it, those of you who are fans, because I found that um, the few nights, I was using it for approximately three nights in a week, just kind of as instructed, you know, with the piano method, if you will, A minor. Um, and I found the next morning I was getting some dryness under the eyes. Maybe I should have done my protect the orifices method. I don't know. And as part of dermatology residency training here in the United States, or really anywhere, honestly, um, you know, at the end of it, you have a huge exam that uh, you have to pass in order to, uh, to uh, get your racing stripes, so to speak. And uh, the exam is quite uh, difficult and a source of stress. And it contains a lot of information in it that uh, is pretty rare and unusual and we never actually see on a day-to-day -day basis, but is important for the residents and, and for dermatologists in general to know uh, and to always think about. So that is uh, how the lectures, so the lectures are structured on a curriculum based on that, usually around therapy and different diseases. And today the lecture is largely image-based because in dermatology, as I've said before, we are a looking specialty. Uh, there's no, our, our eyes are our stethoscope, if you will. And uh, so a lot of uh, dermatology requires the clinician to be very keen at distinguishing things and recognizing patterns on the skin. So today is largely clinical images that I will be showing the residents and quizzing them on. Well, hey guys, so I made it to clinic and the lecture went really well. Residents were, seemed happy and engaged. And got my rose hip tea here in Bubba. So before I walk across the parking lot, why don't we do a little uh, first impression here of the uh, Pacifica Physical uh, Mineral Lip Balm you guys clued me into. I picked this up yesterday, um, hopefully you all have seen my uh, lip balm review, and I'm going to do a first impression of this because I ran out of my Vanny Cream one. Um, ew, cool. It smells like vanilla. This is nice. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Not, as, not as coloration changing as the uh, Vanny Cream one, but... I really like this one. It's uh, vegan, cruelty-free. Thank you guys so much. Um, I am so happy to have found that. Uh, I'm excited to keep giving it a try. Hopefully it does not um, give me any irritation from some of the fragrance things, but I like it. That is a good one, and uh, it's uh, bunny approved. So anyways, I am going into work now, and I will pan scan the antioxidant packed lunch for you guys at the noon hour, hopefully. Okay, so I just reapplied that lip gloss and I kind of like it. So, anyways, it is the noon hour and kind of a repeat, but I've got the uh, curry ginger. I actually added curry powder to curry powder powder to this, and it really came out good this time. It's curry, cabbage, uh, carrots, onion, garlic cooked down in my crock pot, and then uh, cooled and refrigerated with apple cider vinegar on top of spinach with garbanzo and lentil thrown in there. Yeah, and some uh, Mrs. Dash. And we've got supplemental. <laughs> and of course, today I got an orange here. And uh, it's gonna be easy peeling. And saltine, so. Hey guys, so the work day is done. And I wanted to come over here to Ultimate because I wanted to talk about the CeraVe products that you all are asking me about um, in the purple packaging. Um, the one thing that intrigues me about the skin renewing gel oil is I think that it's potentially a Hydra Boost slash Hot Labo Super Plumping Gel-esque formulation, which I like. And I like that this one has ceramides, whereas the other two do not. Um, the Sunflower Blend, I'm like, whatever. Um, but uh, it's fragrance free. However, the one that I'm not too jazzed about, um, 
I mean maybe, but not so much, is the Skin Renewing Day Cream. This has got SPF 30 in it. It's a Ava Benzone Lacking Chemical Sunscreen in a gel formulation. So that sounds cool if you're boosting your AM Moisturizer Sunscreen. You're boosting your AM uh, Zinc Titanium Dioxide Moisturizing Sunscreen. Fantastic. They put this cheapy retinol in it though. That's what I don't like because like that's basically useless and I don't know. Um, cosmeceutical retinols like this and anything that's not tretinoin, tazeratine, or um, a dappling brand name Differin, um, it's just largely useless, okay? Um, so I wish they hadn't done that. Plus, if it is of efficacy, it's going to cause some degree of irritation and susceptibility to the sun. So I don't know that they're just not ideally put on in the morning. This isn't like you wouldn't want to put this on the retinol part of it on in the morning. Like I don't get why they didn't put it in this thing. So they put it in this. Like that just doesn't make any sense to me. So I would rather see this without their fake retinoid in it. And if they're going to put the fake retinoid in something, why didn't they put it in the night cream? Like, this is just ridiculous. Anyways, um, and I'm getting a ton of questions about why, quote unquote, I hate Cetaphil. I don't hate Cetaphil, per se. Just harken back to uh, my Orlando vlogs, where I shared with you all my experience washing my face with Cetaphil cleansers. Um, so, the creamy cleanser does not take off makeup, in my experience, period. Has anyone used their makeup remover? This has um, green tea extract in it and uh, aloe vera and Penex ginseng, which are all ingredients pirated from the Japanese skincare. Cetaphil does, their one potentially redeeming product, as far as I can recall from surveying their website, is they have a mineral suns a tinted mineral sunscreen that has iron oxides in it and it's affordable. So that is one that I am on the hunt for um, and want you guys' feedback on if you have tried it. It's their tinted mineral sunscreen and it has iron oxides in it. That looks like a good one. This is what is bothering me. Is this uh, browning lotion? This is terrible. Like. <laughs> Exclusively formulated for tanning beds. This is like what exclusively formulated for skin cancer like I don't get it This is but basically a bunch of oils a bunch of of oils that are gonna Increase your susceptibility to sun damage like basically this is a pro cancerizing agent as far as I'm concerned like this is terrible Okay, likewise, I see this demon brand has a quote-unquote amazing lip balm SPF 30. It's loaded with flavorings and um, it's a chemical sunscreen, but uh, at least they're trying to redeem themselves on the uh, lip cancer front um, while they give you skin cancer. I don't know. Not gonna lie, but this smells good. Anything with Hawaiian packaging, you know it's gonna smell good. The Pacifica sunscreen for the lips. Totally winning in my opinion. Thank you guys so much for the Rex. It's so nice to put on. It's like compulsively wearable. That's kind of what you want with sunscreen. Like you want to just keep reapplying it. You want it to feel that good that you keep reapplying it. That one's good. I like it. Oh, you guys were, um, so update on the lip front. This is a um, product that you guys were talking about um, before I made yesterday's video that, um, you clued me into this Lano lips, and I think I've heard other YouTubers talk about it. I bet it's really nice on the lips, um, but I don't see one that has sunscreen in it. Maybe they have one. I bet these are fun. But remember, lanolin, totally safe, derived from sheep's fleece. Some people can develop allergies to it, but generally pretty good ingredient as a moisturizer. I bet this rose hand cream is nice. It's not the most strong rose scent. Mm. It's no Neutrogena Norwegian formula, I will say that. Just on a first impression. But the packaging is a lot cuter. <laughs> I really like this one. It's almost kind of like vanilla. You know, it's like 
like vanilla cake frosting or something. I mean, it's not unpleasant to put on at all. Let's see, let's look at the ingredients. I've been carrying the box around with me because I forget sometimes all the ingredients and things and I just want to make sure I'm seeing the right thing. But yeah, this is zinc titanium dioxide um, and thank you guys so much for recommending it. It is a Winzo. Um, it does uh, alter the coloration of the lips similar to the Vanny Cream one, uh, but the uh, but otherwise fine. I think the um, the Vanny Cream one still wins as far as a doctor recommended one, let's just say, um, because it's the least likely of any of them to cause harm. Um, but I would say that, uh, you know, this Pacifica one is uh, falling in line. Uh, pretty, you know. But uh, anyways, we are supposed to get this like tropical storm doohickey. Um, and so... Being that I don't care for inclement weather, I'm gonna head home right quick before it gets fired up, uh, so I get a good spot on the uh, topper on the higher level of my parking garage. I feel like higher is better whenever there is a rainstorm. Give you a little uh, added undercarriage protection there. So yeah, I'm gonna head home and run to the gym, and I'll check in with you guys later. And I am so excited to be coming in with my invigorating ginger and mint spray. I need to fire up my lavender one. I still got him in the sealant, but um, uh, update on skincare wise. I um, have been doing the double cleanse, my my rendition of the double cl double cleanse with the Hadalabo uh, oil-based cleanser. Um, oh, I got one of my hairs floating on the top here. And their foaming face wash. And in reading the comments today, many of you chimed in that I um, should actually use a little bit of water when putting this on because it has an emulsifier in it. Um, you know, unfortunately I can't read the instructions. Um, so thank you for clarifying that and I tried it in that manner tonight and I did find that it, it spread a little bit more easily but you know be aware I have minimal makeup to take off to begin with so um, both ways work for me and I've been putting this on literally right before I hop into the shower so I think it all kind of ends up coming out in the wash, if you will. Um, but I, I do immediately, once I hop into the shower, I come in with, with this guy. And I'm kind of liking him too. He's a, you know, as far as I can tell, really no different in terms of uh, a foaming face wash. I like that it's fragrance free. I like that supposedly it's got um, a little bit of hyaluronic acid in it. I now. Um, when I, um, oh, I guess it was two days ago. <laughs> Um, I, uh, on, I tried out, um, I showed you guys this Cetaphil oil control moisturizer and I'm like, I don't get where, where they get off. I don't get where Cetaphil gets off on calling this oil control. I mean, that's just um, confusing in and of itself. This sunscreen is a chemical sunscreen, okay? It's got uh, avabenzone in it, and this is fine if chemical sunscreens are your deal. There's no problem with this. Uh, you know, be educate yourself. Check out my sunscreen Q and A's. Educate yourself on the the need to reapply this and the shortcomings of the avabenzone. Don't be duped by uh, the lack of a sunburn or redness. And I don't really see that this stands out as unique is what I'm saying. All right, but what I went into Elta looking for specifically, and you know, I don't have any problem with Cetaphil products. They're generally, you know, fine. Um, I just find that their face wash for me is kind of useless. But the one thing that seems to be potentially a redeemer in the Cetaphil milieu is the Cetaphil redness relieving daily foist Facial facial moisture. Cetaphil redness relieving daily, daily facial moisturizer with sunscreen. Broad spectrum SPF 20 redness prone skin. It's a tinted sunscreen that is zinc titanium dioxide exclusively as far as the sunscreen component. But in the inactive ingredients has iron oxides in it. So I am stoked about this product in that it offers a potential. It's very affordable. Okay. It's like I don't know, 12 bucks or something. It's it's actually less expensive than that Australian gold one. And as far as the ingredients, far ingredients that are far less likely to cause problems to you. Not cruelty free, unfortunately. So that's what sets Australian gold apart from this, is the cruelty free status. I wish the SPF on it were in the 30s. I would like to see that. But I think this layered over another one would be great. 
my reservation with this, what I anticipate and why I'm a little, I want to try it out or at least finger test it or get some comments below on anybody who's used this. What I'm suspecting is that because this is marketed for folks with rosacea prone skin like facial redness tend to be your scotch irish skin types uh with redness you know um not the not darker skin types with uh you know post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation melasma issues um etc so uh, that's where i'm like hmm i bet they didn't make the tint dark enough um, but anyways, um, yeah, I thought I would share that with you because that one, I'm, I'm excited about that product. Their other products are fine. They're just not, they just don't stand out to me as like super stellar. But they are affordable. Um, so, you know, I have no problem with Cetaphil. Um, just the products, I haven't been like, the products I've used, I, I just haven't been completely blown away from. But, but anyways, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the vlog today. I'm going to conclude it here. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.